This is the first in a series of videos that's going to teach you how to do the wiki project, how to log into the wiki, how to format wiki text and wiki code, how to put in pictures and tables, and ultimately how to format equations for use in the wiki. Uh, for this video, I'm going to cover logging in, um, creating a new user, what resources are available online, and how to set up a very simple wiki page. So you can see if we start off on our course website, uh, Introduction to Structural Analysis, and we scroll down to the Term Project Information heading, then we have a site link straight to the wiki site. So we can just click on that, and that'll bring up an intermediate page that sends us with a link all the way to the main wiki. So here's the main wiki page. This page has a great deal of information. Uh, under here, engineering disciplines, it's envisioned that later, uh, you know, this wiki could be expanded to include more different disciplines or different courses within civil engineering. Right now we have only structural analysis and I'm gonna to go to that later. Uh, under quick links here is the sample wiki page that I created and that I showed in class. Uh, so you can take a look at that to see an example of what's possible and you can even take a look at the code that I use there uh, in order to have an idea of how to format your own wiki page. Then a little further down, I've listed a bunch of help links so that you can try to find some help that you need when necessary. Uh, anything detailed that's not covered in the videos, you can find here. For example, there's a full user's guide for the wiki software. The wiki software that we're using is called MediaWiki. And so this user guide includes everything that you'd ever want to know about MediaWiki. More, more important than the general user guide, though, is the formatting guide and this editing reference card. So the formatting guide looks like this, tells you how to format your markup text, tells you how to make lists, how to put in tags and tables and links, and all that good stuff is covered here. Also, this PDF is very useful because it gives a quick reference card that you can print out and put at your desk if you're trying to format your wiki page. So then all the information about how to do math editing is down here. We have the LaTeX math guide, which is a PDF that gives a very detailed explanation about how to do any kind of math that you would be interested in looking at, all the different kinds of symbols that you can use, how to do fractions and uh, sums and all that stuff. So I'm gonna cover some of that in a later video, but all the information is available here online as well. There's even an online equation editor that you can use later to uh, where you can input different parts of equations on the left here and it'll output the proper LaTeX code in order to represent that equation. So that's gonna be covered later on. Uh, figure illustration standards are to come. I'll probably put some things here about, uh, you know, how to, how to draw pin end connections and uh, fixed end connections and things like that how wide to make your beams and such. And there's a link here to a freeware video, uh, sorry, um, graphics illustration software called Inkscape, which you can use if you don't have access to anything else. But I think that there's a blanket license for CorelDRAW on campus that you can use. And that's a very capable uh, vector image editing software. So when you start out, you'll be looking at the page like this. Uh, you can see you have links here for reading the current page, viewing the source, and viewing the history of this page. So if we click these without being logged in, you can see we just see all of the wiki code, uh, all the markup that was used in order to make that page, and you can browse that for any page without being logged in. And you can also see a history of all the edits that were made to this page. You can see this page, the main page, uh, it's all a bunch of edits that I've done uh, over the past couple weeks in order to get it up and running. Let me go back to read. Now, each one of you is going to want to create an account. And to do that, you go all the way up to the top right here where it says create account. And you click on it. And all, all you need to do is, is provide a username. It doesn't have to be your name. It could be anything. Uh, it could be Fluffy Bunny 123 if that's what you're into. It could, be, uh, it could be your last name if you wish. Then you're going to put a password and retype the password, and that's all you need. The email address is optional. The real name is optional. In fact, I wouldn't bother putting any of that information in there. 
Uh, the last thing that you're going to need is our course code. Uh, this prevents uh, automated bots on the internet from getting access to the wiki and filling it up with junk. So you're going to want to put CIVE -E 3203 in here, and that will give you access. Um, but I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. The login link is right here. And I'll log in. So you see, now that I've logged in, I have access to edit the page instead of just view the source. So if I edit the page, it looks very much the same. But now I can actually change this if I wanted. And then I can save the page. And I can do that to any page. So just be careful. Uh, as you're going around the wiki that you're only editing your own page and you're not editing someone else's work. Uh, you know, you don't want to go around causing any trouble. So that's that for now. I'll cancel those changes. Okay, so once you know what your topic is, you can go into structural analysis here. And I've already set up a list of all of the possible topics. And I see most of them are in red. Uh, the one that I've done already is in blue, so if I click on that one and bring that up, and you can see this is the wiki page that I already created. I have some nice headings, uh, some paragraph text. These here are definitions. I'll show you how to do those in a later video. Here's a nice table with some equations in it, another table with some images. I've got floating images everywhere. So we're going to get to how to make all of these different kinds of things. Um, an example product pro problem with a with an inline image here, and references, of course, which are going to be very important. So, if you want to create your own, see the red ones haven't been created yet. So, say uh, my subject is types of structures. So, if I click on that, and it's red, you see now we're creating it. So, it doesn't exist. So we're just creating it for the first time, and this is very easy. So now whatever I type in here uh, will form the page uh, for the first time once I save it. So let's look at some of the different things that we can do in wikis. Uh, the first thing is any text you type in is automatically put in a paragraph. So we can say paragraph 1 is the best. Paragraph two is the second best. Paragraph three is the absolute worst. Okay, so here I've pressed enter here, I've pressed enter here and left a space and I've pressed enter here. Now what happens when I wanna look at this page? Uh, one other important thing here, so you have three options. Uh, once you wanna look at the page, you can either save the page which puts it in the database and displays it, or you can just show a preview. Now, as you're working, you wanna save periodically, but um, the best thing to do usually if you make a small change and you wanna see is just show preview, because that won't put a new uh, item in the database. Every time you save a page, it saves a new version of that page in the database. So in order to make sure that the database doesn't blow up too huge, um, it's better to usually show preview because I have a limited database size on this site. So you see what happened. I have paragraph one is the best, paragraph two is the second best, paragraph three is the worst. So the first two are actually in the same paragraph and the third one is apart. So that's because if you want to use a separate paragraph in a wiki, you actually have to leave a line space in between. Otherwise it assumes that you want them to be together. If I put these ones together, and show the preview again. You see now they're all in the same paragraph. So separate paragraphs need spaces in between. Um, what about some basic formatting? So if I want to emphasize some text, for example, uh, I want to add one layer of emphasis. I use the single quote. So that's the single quote. That's the button beside the enter key. Uh, so I have to do double single quote on either side of the text I want to emphasize. Okay, and that will give a single emphasis. Now, if I want to emphasize it a little more, I put three of those single quotes. And if I want to emphasize it more still, I want to use four. Let's take a look at what those look like by preview. 
there. So you see single emphasis gives italics, double emphasis gives bold, and quadruple emphasis actually it doesn't seem to be supported. <laughs> it should be bold and italic, but it looks like in uh, in this build it's not supported. So I just have bold plus some extra quotes. So those are useless. Now what about some headings? We want to be able to space out our wiki information uh, into some sort of structured form. Okay, so we want to add some headings. Uh, the way that we do that is we use the equal sign. So for example, a first level heading below the title is going to be double equal sign heading one, double equal sign. So you put those on either side and that's how you know it's a single level heading. Now if I want to put a, a heading underneath that but that is a part, still a part of that single heading, I put three and I can say heading you know, 1.1 and I can even go one level deeper and say heading 1.1.1, for example. Okay, so we're just using these equal signs. Okay, a single equal sign doesn't exist because that's a kind of equivalent to the title for the page and that's created automatically. So you start with double equal signs, then you go to triple equal signs and then quadruple equal signs. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, you see heading one, heading 1.1, which is underneath heading one, and heading 1.1.1, which nominally is underneath heading 1.1. Now, if we add, start adding enough headings, heading 3, I think that should be enough, then you see it automatically creates a table of contents for us, so we don't have to worry about handling that ourselves.